Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Refusing to be Silenced. This is the time at the World of Women Festival where we celebrate women who just will not be quiet. They won't shut up. And that's not because of the ordinary things that we think of in this country. It's because of war, atrocities, being forced to flee, sexual violence. And we do this in conjunction with RAW, Reaching All Women in War, and the Anna Politkovskaya Awards. Now, Anna Politkovskaya was killed 10 years ago. She was an extraordinary, campaigning, brilliant Russian journalist. She exposed atrocities in Chechnya. She exposed atrocities across Russia. That's why she ended up dead. But other women carry her flame now. And for 10 years, they have been rewarded and awarded. I'm Mariana Katsarova. I'm the founder of Raw and War and the Anna Politkovska Award. I'm extremely humbled and honored. I'm here, first of all, with Khaloud Valid from Syria, an inspirational, brave Syrian journalist that we are honoring today. And I'm also joined here by um, a group of amazing women leaders. Every year, for 10 years, we have been celebrating, we have been celebrating bravery, the courage of women like Anna Politkovskaya, who, yes, was killed 10 years ago, and this is the 10th year we are giving the Anna Politkovskaya Award. Um, I feel that um, we now live in a world where there are more conflicts and more wars probably than ever before, and there are more victims of this conflict, there are more refugees, and we now have them uh, on our doorsteps in Europe. At the same time, I want to keep my hope up that uh, the amount of courageous women who can't remain silent, who refuse to be silenced by the oppressive regimes, by the secret services, by the airplanes that are bombing their homelands, is also increasing. Hello, everyone. I, I first just want to thank Mariana so much for starting Ra 10 years ago. It is so critical we honor the courageous women who speak out and bring the information. And I, I just have to say, I feel honored to stand here in the presence of you, Khalid. Honored. Um, I feel. Um, Women who are willing to risk their lives, to bring information, to speak the truth, to connect up other people in the midst of war are truly, truly the bravest, most gorgeous beings. How would we uh, behave in the circumstances as Halud or other recipients of Anna Politkovsky Award? And I think that Anna will be 
extremely proud and extremely honored that, honored that so many women uh, were inspired by her work and life and uh, continue to fight uh, against oppressive regimes around the world. So my best wishes to Halud and her newspaper and to all Syrian people just to finish as soon as possible this terrible conflict and uh, all the best. So it's my privilege to present this award and in thinking about it, and this is the third year I think that I've sat on a stage with amazing women who've put their lives in t danger for years. And since they've all got the capacity to imagine a different future, which is why they're doing it, they also obviously have the imagination that would make them think about what it would be like to be tortured or what it would be like to be shot, what it would be like to have your life extinguished, that must be part of their imagination. And so I make myself go there, and I'm frightened. I'm very, very frightened at all of those thoughts for myself, and I don't know whether I'll ever be in a situation where I will need to actually be frightened. But therefore, how lucky I feel that there are women who will stand in that place for the betterment of humanity. And I just have so much awe for that ability to hold the nerve when you're that frightened and do something to change the world anyway. So with great respect, I give this award. honored to, re to receive this award in the name of Anna. This award means a lot to me, not only because I am trying to tell the truth. At the time, the whole world is against us, but because Anna was killed by a regime that is supporting the regime who is killing us Syrians, and they are participating in killing us nowadays. I feel like it's not Anna that refused to be silenced. The message came to me, I am the Syrian. The same regime who silenced Anna is trying to silence me and support the regime who is keeping me silenced for 40 years. There's no privilege like this privilege. And nothing can keep us silenced anymore, only because of the sake of Anna, Vian, Razan Zaytouni, who is another Syrian, who was silenced by the opposition and the so-called people who are liberating us, but they are a same dictator. Nothing is going to keep us silenced, nothing. Thank you. Well, I mean, obviously, I'm a journalist, so I know why I think it's important. But you tell me, why do you think journalism is important? I mean, there's other things which are important. You know, that nurses are needed, doctors are needed. Why are journalists needed? Doctors are needed to save our lives, but journalists are there to tell the world that our lives is being saved by these brave doctors. Nurses are needed, food is needed, but journalists are there just to tell the world that these people are waging a war against the war by themselves and and they are afraid of no one that we want to tell the truth and this is what's going on and did you always want to be a journalist not always what did you want to be when you were little a traffic police officer <laughs> <laughs> funny how life turns out isn't it <laughs> let me turn to vian 
Vianne is last year's winner, and many of you will remember that she is an extraordinary champion of her people, the Yazidi people. And many of you will be familiar because a lot has come out in the years through TV documentaries and so on about Yazidi women who were, have been enslaved by the Islamic State. Vianne, bring us up to date. Tell us what's happening with those women now. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to tell uh, Khulut congratulations for this award. Um, I, I'm proud for, for her about her work. Now we still have 3,600 women and girls are kidnapping by ISIS. With, with everything bad they did with them, raped them, sla sex slaves, used them as a sex of slaves, and killed them, and everything. Maybe after two years, yeah. the people, um, people forget, forget, forget people what forget. happened, but it's still happened. It's still we have 3,600 women are uh, kidnapped by us. Okay. Still we have 2,000 girls are need uh, help, psychological helping. Still we have 420,000 Yazidi people are uh, refugees. Still, we, yes, we are liberated Sinjar, but 90% of my city are destroyed and we need to uh, rebuild this. And some think it's a very important. I need anyone to help me. We need to rebuild the trust and rebuild the accept other in my country. What makes you, I mean, do you, we talked about despair at the beginning. Do you sometimes despair? Do you sometimes think I can't cope with this? I can't keep going? Uh, no. You never think that? No, because I can't. I can't. I'm a, I am a only a member of the Yazidi in the Iraqi parliament, and we don't have uh, many people can speak in the world about what happened for Yazidi. If I am um, uh, thinking about myself, the Yazidi people lost this hope to one, or one person or one woman are speaking every time about what happened with them. No, I can't feeling about myself. Do you know the ISIL? It's um, write my name in the top of the list of ISIL. But I don't care about that because I'm looking for my, uh, I'm looking what happened for my community. Yeah, to help the rest. And I help them. They should to help them. I mean, we're talking about ISIS here or ISIL. You've seen that right there in, in Paris, yeah? Uh, yes, indeed. I'm. I'm. Um, um, I think. I think if there's one thing that, that that must be said about the the terrorist attacks in in Paris is that they, you know, beyond everything that's been said about um, the atrocity of it and the fact that 130 people were were killed and many more wounded, um, it did uh, bring in a dramatic way to all every, to all our consciences in in Europe I believe because this was in a European capital that we cannot turn a blind eye we cannot be uninterested unconcerned about what's going on in the Middle East and what people are suffering from there because for a long time perhaps we thought we we might you know be able to cut ourselves off from there and contain that crisis this multiple, uh, multi, multifaceted crisis, but if anything, if anything, um, these events in Paris have shown it's that that is very much an illusion, and um, I want to I want to pay tribute to the um, women and the journalist women who describe to us the realities mm -hmm. from these uh, crises areas in Syria, in Iraq, because it has to be. It has to be repeated that there, there are very few Western journalists yeah. who travel there now. Um, it's extremely dangerous. There used to be more Western journalists in 2011, 2012, and then there were kidnappings. The, the violence became extreme, and in in many um, in many media organizations, the decision was made simply not to send yeah. journalists to these war zones because it, there was there was too high a risk. It, does it bother you that there are no women at the Geneva Peace Talks? I mean, I know there's a, there's a sort of special ghetto for women which they have, but are there in, you know, the big important talks, no uh, women? Does that matter or does it really...? No, it, it, it really 
um, hurts that there are no women on the negotiation table. If we have some women on the negotiation table, things will be seen from another perspective. Mm -hmm. Now things are seen only from one perspective, which is power. We don't need power, we need peace. Tell me a bit more about your journalists, because you're an editor and your journalists, so how do, they, how do they live? How do they cope? How do they get enough to eat? How do they file their copy? How, tell me how it works. The journalists. Your journalists, yeah. Um, they are amazing. Uh, they know how to survive during the very unbelievable circumstances. When there is shelling, they hold their cameras and they record. They go and uh, document all the bad incidents committed either by the regime or other armed groups, and they face them bravely. And sometimes they have to work under side names because other armed groups are threatening them, same like the regime. So they are extremely brave. We have a reporter reporting from Raqqa, and she is amazing. So, so your reporter in Raqqa, the headquarters of the Islamic State, is a woman? Yeah. Does that make it easier for her to operate than it would be for a man? Yes. Mm -hmm. Kind of, yes. Because she just covers up? And she can report the stories happening in her house, and she can mingle with other women and tell the, listen to other stories and easily. She, she, she does not need to go interrogate people or ask questions. People come to her and talk to her. Just tell us what it, what it means to you to get the Anna Politkovskaya Award. It means a lot. It's not only me. We were 23 people, a group of women and men who were extremely brave, I'm not talking about myself. They were extremely brave to face the regime and to say what are the atrocities committed by the regime and then things developed to have other atrocities committed by other groups inside Syria. These people sacrificed them, their lives to the, for the sake of telling the truth to the world and we want to continue. We want to continue telling the world about what's going on, about the stories untold to the world. The success of women who are surviving the war, now Syria is composed of 70%. I mean, the, 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 pop, the population of Syria is 70% women. These are the breadwinners, and these are the protectors, and the stability creator in their communities. No one hears about their stories. It's us who tell you that we still have these women. Syria is not the hub of terrorists. We are human beings, same like you. We used to have a similar life to you. We used to go to school, we used to go to universities, but we were oppressed. And we only called for our freedom. And because we called for our freedom, we were faced by the whole world and even the whole universe. And who knows, maybe the Martians are going to join the war one day. Because they are the only ones left. So, the award means to me all these things. That the work we did is not unnoticed. Everyone is like you recognize what we do. And you support us, your hearts with us. And we will continue because of you. Thank you, Thank Hollywood. You. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Just, uh, just left me to pass the baton to uh, Mariana Katsarova to finish up this afternoon. Uh, sorry. Um, I just feel um, totally... Um, I, I feel hopeful, actually. Um, I feel hopeful listening to Khaloud, listening to Vian, uh, but also listening to Natalie and to... Uh, Lindsay, um, to, I mean, this is an amazing uh, group of women that join us tonight, uh, today uh, to honor Khaloud and to give the, to present the Anna Politkovska, uh, Anna Politkovska Award. I would like to very much thank you, first and foremost, to you. With love you lay them down again. And the
Oh. 